like imagine a mermaid, but yeah. instead of having a fish tail, she's like serpents on the bottom. And she has also wings like a bird. So she could fly and she lives. And then I found out all this stuff about her. She lives in the rivers, specifically in like Laos, Myanmar and Northern Thailand, which is where I was. And that she grants people like, I guess, the language to speak in an animistic way. Like, so all of a sudden animals started like, I mean, animals always loved me and I loved animals, but there was like, there was like a constant you know, just of nature. And I was, I just touched something. And then the paranormal phenomena that was going on in my room after I brought that energy back with me, was just like the dreams I were having were like so empowering. And like, it was like the opposite of a negative haunt. It was just like all the best possible things, waking up like refreshed and happy in the morning and just like ready to take on the day and everything that I was working towards lands and lands and lands all these jobs I wanted to start coming to me. It was like, I became so blessed by this energy. You know, it's like I brought something back. And so it's like, you can have positive haunts, you know, just like you can have negative ones. And it really just has to, you know, and the second that I started getting a little too cocky with my endeavors and I started forgetting, like losing sight, that connection to that Naga Kanya energy that was so benevolent to me started fading out because I had lost sight. So again, Mm -hmm. my energy started to shift and what had attached that energy to me initially that was giving me all these blessings started falling out because I was losing sight and my energy was shifting. So I had to get back into that space again where I was like meditating, being grateful opening up my heart chakra again. And then I started getting, but by that time, like I kind of, that, that energy had dissipated, you know? So Mm -hmm. now I'm constantly trying to like seek out other positive attachments, you know, from energies and things like that. So if you don't want a negative haunt, you know, you change yourself, you change your internal vibe. You bring anything back with you from like a bad location. Um, you should change your, your vibe and yourself. And, you know, maybe that means seeking counsel, learning to meditate, you know, taking a nice, go to the ocean and to have a little personal baptism in the, in the water, things like that help, you know, I I find that, I mean, people that don't live close to water like that, um, like if you're landlocked in the middle of the United States and you have a negative aspect haunt, I highly recommend, uh, if you can't go to like a private space, like, like with a big bath and get like Epsom salts and, and bath salts. I love a Himal- like Dr. Teal's Himalayan salt soak is one of my favorites. And you just do a nice soak in that. And that helps to shift that negative energy. Um, salt also is a very trans, uh, transformative mineral and it can help clean negative energy attachments. I also recommend using, um, keeping around you, like in your room, things like black tourmaline and selenite. Um, so that way you can like have a protected space. Um, cause those minerals, there are, it's scientifically proven that each mineral has its own vibration, has its own way of, you know, cleansing the positive and negative ions within the atmosphere. So there is a science, but it's not just some like juju that crystals work. Like, We use minerals to transform energy in devices all the time. And um, we use diamonds to focus laser lights so that we can burn through metals. And we use quartz to keep a predictable time within our watches and and even to like transform light within camera lenses. Um, So, I mean, there is science that that these types of minerals work with energy to create and transform things like light and ion and, and, and certain types of haunts like negative aspect haunts live within a certain light frequency and vibrational frequency that certain crystals can transmute. So things like it it makes it more scientific. It makes it like, it is. Yeah. And and I don't know Earth provides it all. The earth provides it all, you know? And, and if you think about everything that we use, like that we make, um, you know, people are like, Oh, I don't believe in ghosts, but I believe that ghosts are the, the recordings of energy within an environment. 
And it's funny how as human beings, we can take elements from this planet and create something like a cassette tape or a videotape or a CD, but they can't believe that the planet can do that on its own. Yet we mine everything from this planet to make these things that are recording devices. And it's like, why do we take the power away from Mother Gaia and everything that she has and we have to like take the power away from ourselves and all of the power that we have and we put it in objects and we believe those objects can do it, but we can't and planet can't. And it doesn't make sense to me because everything that we build comes from this terrain from this planet that we live on. So I believe that all the things that we've created in plastic and metal con- and metal containers that do all these high tech things, this planet can do as well. And and when and we see it happen that, you know, is outside of our man made materials, we call it phenomena, we call it ghosts and we call it this and that. But really uh the true alchemist you know, aside from, you know, man, human beings being alchemists is this planet because she contains all of the elements to create things, even things that we have yet to discover. So I try to tell people that, you know, all the time that it's not out of the realm of possibility. If we can create images on, like right now I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm this image on your, your screen but there's nothing connecting my laptop right now. Like it's not plugged in. Uh, it is literally like if I showed this device to someone a hundred years ago, they would be like flipping their shit. You know, they'll be like, how is a human being the size of like three inches within this screen? You know, like <laughs> totally. And, and it's just like, it's a phenomena, you know, it's like, how can we do that? Like we do it because we, mined and harnessed all the elements from this planet and we used our human intellect to create it and harness it in a way that we can manipulate and then if we don't know how to manipulate things or harness things then it becomes a threat it becomes a a demonic experience it becomes an angelic experience people spiritualize things and really it's all alchemy it's all science and that's why i practice magic because i believe you can harness these energies of, you know, crystals and frequencies to attain and manifest your desires, you know? That is so cool. I've never thought about it like that, but it makes perfect sense. So we never we never got to film stuff um, and music stuff. I don't know if we want to save that for another visit or uh, if you want to kind of talk about oh, yeah. how you got into the, the 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 cliffs notes of the other stuff i guess i know but it's like so much cool stuff i hate to do the cliffs notes version of it but um if you want if you want to say some stuff about it go ahead yeah i mean <laughs> well, I, really, I, I really like want to get into like how you got into film and how you started studying that um and what and then your experiences being on set i want to get into all of that so i almost feel like that's a separate visit Okay. Well, I don't know what you think. A separate visit about like working, yeah, on set. But yeah, because I, that could be a whole hour in itself. I feel like. Yeah. I mean, just a little cliff's note was that um, I always went to school. So even though I had like joined a paranormal team, like elementary school, middle school, high school, even college, I was always a theater kid. I I did ballet, I did jazz dance. And then when I went into middle school, I started doing theater. Then in high school, I started doing theater and costume design. And then in college, I started doing um, musical theater. And yeah, so I've always kind of, I've loved acting. I always considered that that was going to be my career route. But at the same time, there is this uh, other aspect of me that was really into, uh, spiritual phenomena um and so it it's funny though how it it merged in the middle because i think me being a theater kid my whole life um gave me the i guess ability to work on camera so that way i wasn't shy that i was able to shine and be a paranormal investigator on tv um and kind of understand production 
before I, I wasn't so green, you know, being thrown on camera all of a sudden. And when I moved out to LA, um, people knew me in the paranormal sphere and automatically that kind of throws me in the kind of horror genre. And yes. um, I had met a casting director who was mutual friends with another friend in LA. And, and she was like, wow, you went to school for, for acting and all this stuff. Like, I'm going to put you down with this director who's casting right now. And I did an audition for that director. And this, his name is Spooky Dan for this movie called, for a movie called Sleigh Bells. And I ended up getting cast as one of the leads. And then since, and then that was produced by Darren Bowsman, who did all the Saw movies, or he, he directed the first Saw movies and then produced the rest of them. And then I met other directors that way. And then little by little, I just started getting roles in all these horror films. And horror was always my favorite genre because it had all the ghost stories. You know, and I, I feel like horror movies were the movies growing up that like could co really comment on society because, yes. you know, a lot of people weren't paying attention to what they were trying to say. And so I always thought they were some of the smartest movies, too, even yes. though it could be a slasher flick. A lot of times it was making a really important yeah. commentary on our society. So yeah. that's so cool. So um, I love doing it. I love doing like acting. And I love I think moving out to L.A. was the right step because it kind of put me into you know, the pocket of all of those people and every one of those paranormal, uh, well, all of those directors have, you know, paranormal experiences. They all want to talk to me about it. So it's kind of cool because we could like kind of scratch each other's brains a little bit and learn, I can learn more about cinema and filmmaking and they can learn more about paranormal phenomena. And I get to meet so many cool people and even work with idols from like movies that I used to watch as a kid. So that was really cool. I, I can't believe I have an IMDB page that like slight is just like slowly stacking up and stacking up and stacking up. Like I'm like, wow, again, like, you know, what helps me with that is my intuition and manifesting, you know, my reality is just like, you keep your mind on the prize. You, you make sure that you're constantly resonating high vibrations. And then when you resonate high vibrations, you attract other high vibrational people and high vibrational people tend to be creative. And so yeah. then you have collaborations and then you start working with people in all different arenas. And then all of a sudden you find that your life is full of genuine, high vibrational creatives. And I'm not complaining. <laughs> I think, and I think too, your path to acting is such an important thing for people to hear who are interested in that because um, it's so, it's people tell you when you're training to be an actor, you just have to be yourself. Oh, even to be any performer, to be successful, you have to, it's almost like you're being you on purpose, but you have mm -hmm. to be so yourself that yeah. it's like undeniable. It's compelling. And a lot of people don't understand the, what it's, they try to be everything else. They try to be everything. Yeah. But the thing that really got you success in that world was being so yourself and they needed you. Yeah. And so it was like a perfect marriage. And I get cool. typecast all the time, but I'm okay with that. And that's another thing. That's what casting is all about too. Like a lot of actors feel like uh, they could fit in any role and, and it's okay if you can't. To be honest, you have to kind of own a certain aspect. So that's why yeah. you have a lot of people that only play villains or like me, I'm always in a horror movie being either a witch or in a freaking stigmata scene or the ghosty <laughs> movie. You know what I mean? Like I, I actually um, got a stigmata one time. That is a paranormal phenomena that happened to me. We were just talking about it last night um, on zoom with my old band. When we were on tour in long branch, New Jersey, I woke up with straight up stigmata on my hands and like, no, like no, no explanation, no anything. How old was were you? Do you remember like how old you were when that happened? Um, I was, I was like 23 or something like that. So I was pretty young, but um, yeah, they were just saying last night, don't you remember that time you woke up in New Jersey with stigmata? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that scared the shit out of me. I wanted to leave New Jersey stat. <laughs> That's spooky. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I, that gets into like personal things that I don't know, like how comfortable people are talking about certain aspects. But a lot of the time when like possessions or strange things like that occur, um, 
there's a lot going on within the individual. And a lot of it usually stems from like depression or substance abuse. 